Welcome again to Mass Timber March Madness. Uh, we have Brian Brashaw today of the U.S. Forest Service, uh, and he'll be presenting on the U.S. Forest Service and Mass Timber. Uh, before we begin, as always, I do want to thank the U.S. Forest Service and the Tallwood Design Institute for their support of this entire series, making it possible. And now we'll let Bob Brian introduce himself and we'll take questions at the end of his presentation. Thanks, okay, Greg. Brian. Thank you, Greg, appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Um, it's, uh, I wish I could see all of you, but, um, but that'll be someday again here in the, in the future. Uh, I'm Brian, Brian Brasha, and I'm, this, I'm the incoming assistant director for the Wood Innovations uh, national program. Um, it was announced three weeks ago. My first day is next week, but I think you all know that that uh, sometimes it's the day that it's announced. So uh, I'm really uh, happy to be, uh, you know, part of this program. Um, and it's it's really it's it's a great great effort, great initiative, and and it really closes the loop for me. You know, this the set of images I have here is really kind of the forest to building, forest to market supply chain and. And I grew up in northern Wisconsin. My dad worked for a hardwood lumber company. And I, his friends were foresters. They, one of them was the, worked for the U.S. Forest Service, and he was the district ranger. And that connection between forestry and forest products really has, has been throughout my career. Uh, I started as a forester at, at Wisconsin Stevens Point. And, and along the way, I um, uh, identified a graduate research program, Washington State University. In, in Pullman, and so I moved to Pullman. And you know, there our first project was was testing 66 foot glue lamb beams that were four feet deep and a foot wide. And you know, just an incredible opportunity to think about it, engineered wood products manufacturing. What you know, a lot of ways we're now you know framing as 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 mass timber. So that work and that connection between forest products, forestry has has been really key. I've been with the Forest Service for six years, and, and the reason I, I took the position, I left the University of Minnesota Duluth, was, was to really close that circle and, and how we can use market-based approaches and innovative wood products to support healthy, resilient forest management. We really do a good job in this country with managing our forests. We're growing more trees in general than we're harvesting, um, but we have challenges. And some of those challenges are what we're gonna talk about today and how mass timber really fits into that. So that's my goals today is, is to kind of bring the forest to market perspective, uh, to think about for some of you, why is the Forest Service investing in mass timber and what kinds of investments are you making? And that's really what I hope to, uh, hope to walk through uh, with you today. Why mass timber? You know, um, that's a big one. What, what is it with the Forest Service that, that you've taken this approach? And, and I've got to give a lot of credit to predecessors of mine, uh, Steve Marshall and, and, uh, and his, you know, leadership in, in our Wood Innovations team, but really across the agency has is, is really been supportive of our investments in mass timber. And the reason that we're doing this is it, it really does connect to forest health, both in a hazardous fuels reduction and, but also as our ability to just improve the overall condition of our forests. And that's a, a really key part of why we're trying to make this, uh, you know, why this fits for us. The other is, is connection to economies, rural economic development. But this also brings in a lot of cases, the buildings that we're talking about are urban and it brings the connection back to the resource and brings the connection back to the land management and rural economies. And I think this has been uh, really a unique opportunity for me to be involved with uh, throughout my career. But it's also a more sustainable building material. And I think that as we understand some of the climate challenges that are ahead of us, wood and wood-based materials and markets for them do a couple things. One is it keeps forests as forests. Two, it helps us support forest management. And three, it creates additional demand so that we can really recapture and replant and regain some of the lands that may have been converted to other uses over time. So we have more forest land in the country now than we've had for, um, for, for decades, um, more trees, uh, but we really have this opportunity to uh, create an enhanced improved uh, manufacturing. The Forest Service mission is, is broad. Um, it really is to support the health, diversity, and productivity of our nation's forests. Uh, not just for us today, but for future generations. 
for those of you, you know, um, outside of, you know, I mean, we're all coming from different places. I'm in uh, Northern Minnesota and I'm actually at one of our national forest supervisors offices, uh, the Superior National Forest. So kind of straight center of the map, right in the westernmost point of Lake Superior in, in Duluth. But we have national forests uh, throughout the country. Um, and, and they really are, we're, we are tasked and, and you know, stewarded to, to manage those lands. Um, very, you know, larger percentages of lands in the West, uh, but we do have, you know, lands ac across the country. Um, in fact, it's 193 million acres of forest that we're engaged with on our federal lands. But we also work with partners and our Wood Innovations Program that I'll represent reports to state and private forestry. And, and what that does is it's a created a partnership that we have with our states, with um, our tribal nations, with non-industrial private landowners, and just with broad industry landowners as well. So really think about our connection is cooperative forestry and its partners, state and private forestry. When I engage with a lot of folks in this industry, you know, a lot of the conversation is around forest management. And, and that's what we're really trying to talk about. And without markets, oftentimes, state foresters will report, you know, no markets, no management, no money, no markets, no money, no management. And so that really is, I think, a key part of, you know, creating this connection. And here you can see lands in, in, uh, in Northeast Washington uh, state, and, and that is a managed uh, forest. And having markets is essential and important to supporting that. You know, there are lands where uh, within the Forest Service, um, you know, probably around 50% of our acreage, which is either wilderness designation or, um, or roadless, and that really prohibits or restricts logging. But we do do a good job in those areas that we can manage uh, collectively. Our Wood Innovations team. Uh, this is you know, a, a retreat that we had in Oregon uh, just two years ago prior to, uh, to COVID, but it, it's, it's our national network of regional specialists that are wood markets, wood utilization, um, market support, really the on the ground connection. So our Wood Innovations program includes our Washington office, Washington DC office. Um, it includes a small unit at the Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the laboratory here uh, as well. And then each of our Forest Service regions. So we have staff uh, throughout the country from Alaska to Georgia and from the Northeast to the Southwest. So it really is a great team and I'm really proud to be uh, representing the national, uh, national effort and, and initiative. Um, staffed um, by some really outstanding folks uh, across the country who really understand a lot of the issues at the regional level. They're also the connection to the national forest system and to state and private connections within the region. So we rely very heavily on them uh, to, to be engaged and to uh, you know, bring opportunities uh, forward. My small unit at the Forest Products Laboratory, uh, which will continue to report to me, is an interface. So it's an interface between states and it's also and, and the Forest Products Laboratory, but it's also an interface between the regional coordinators and the Forest Products Laboratory. Uh, many partners. We couldn't do any of this without partners, and I, I almost hesitate to put a list up here because I know I'm leaving off somebody really important. But we've been just really proud of our long-term partnership with the, with the Softwood Lumber Board and with a lot of other organizations as we've moved forward um, you know, through, the, through uh, folks like the American Wood Council, um, Woodworks, you know, U.S. Endowment for Forestry and Communities, and so many others that we've engaged with um, over time. You know, that's really been one of the, the huge successes and keys to success is, is these partnerships, and, and we really look forward to building and keeping momentum that's already been established uh, by some of the fo folks who come before and eventually will come after. I mentioned uh, the Forest Products Laboratory. This is our national laboratory, um, which has been in Madison, Wisconsin since 1910. And really it was created as this interface, again, between thinking about efficient and wise use and then safe use of wood products in general. So a lot of the innovations that we are talking about and we are using uh, every day uh, have come out of the Forest Products Laboratory. Um, I like to kid a little bit that this is the only concrete building that I'm gonna show, um, but built in, in the, so this location on the University of Wisconsin campus is, is 1935. 
um, but our new Centennial Research Facility is an outstanding um, example of uh, structural uh, wood, mass timber, and uh, allows us to do a lot of work in, in research and collaboration. Um, the laboratory, as, as, as you see here in a few pictures, has, has evolved over time. And in the 1930s, when it was, when it was first built, there was actually corn and, and agriculture around, uh, around the laboratory. And now it's surrounded by the University of Wisconsin and, and their hospitals. There's two broad research areas. Uh, one is our wood fiber and composites research. So technically chips and smaller. And then our wood products research, which is chips and, and larger. So lumber, uh, veneer, um, engineered wood products, durability, um, fire, you know, just a whole host of different things that, that are engaged there. And then my unit is really this connection, the force products, your marketing unit, my previous unit, um, which will, uh, will, will come with me is, is this connection between that research staff. Uh, I've got a section a little bit later where I'm gonna actually go into a little bit more depth on some of the research that has and is taking place by the talented research team, teams at the force products laboratory and, and their partners. Two publications uh, to kind of think about um, that really frame this one is, is you know, how, do we, how do we really you know, actually track um, our forest levels in the United States? And so the Forest Service has a uh, unit within our research and development uh, section, which is called Forest Inventory and Analysis. And that has been a very long-term uh, program of understanding the species, size, and diversity of our nation's forests. And, published um, data is online, published um, you know, in, in many different ways, but you know, we, every 10 years we, uh, we provide a new um, assessment and, and the, the, in 2019 um, data based on uh, you know, came forward. So I think that's a really good opportunity to kind of think about what's happening on a national basis. And then our, our flagship um, report at the Forest Products Laboratory is, is the Wood Handbook. And we're not quite there, but I think in another week, that 2021 uh, version of the Wood Handbook will be uh, will be published. So approximately every 10 years. Uh, so what you're seeing is the um, is basically the 2010, um, uh, which is a centennial edition. So the Forest Products Laboratory, 1910. So um, those are some things to uh, to think about. The Wood Handbook is online um, through our uh, through our websites and other activities. So that gets us a little bit to mass timber. This is the first actual you know modern mass timber building that I got to uh, to get into. Uh, this is a T3 building in, in Minneapolis, just overlooking uh, the Minnesota Twins uh, stadium and, and really created this understanding and opportunity uh, for what we're now seeing as we, as we move forward. Um, you know, folks who are on this, uh, this event today are very familiar um, and in a lot of cases, way more technical than I am. But, it, you know, this is, this is a, just a great image. You know, here, this is downtown Atlanta. And here we are, um, you know, with a, a taller, uh, timber building that is creating this connection between rural and urban. It's creating our ability to manage our forests and a more improved sustainable building product and material. The United States, um, North America has, um, you know, great manufacturing, uh, you know, partners uh, that are providing and supplying this. And, and that's, it's, I like the, the diversity of uh, opportunity. You know, laminated veneer lumber is a product that has uh, been around for uh, for a long time, um, but CLT and and mass plywood manufacturing are emerging in the United States, along with uh, nail laminated, dowel laminated products uh, from uh, partners in Canada, and glue lamp. Right, this is our mass timber that has been around for uh, for a long period of uh, of time, and and none of what the work that we're doing, you know, glue lamb is just such a huge part of advancing that, that capacity. So just again, you know, just kind of thinking through all the opportunities that, that are out there. The Forest Service entrance into this uh, was really strategic and it was um, deliberate. And I give uh, Steve Marshall and his colleagues a lot of credit, um, uh, Melissa Jenkins and others for kind of thinking through, um, you know, how to, how to, how to make an impact because I think we have relatively limited uh, investment funds to do this, although we have uh, you know, put a substantial amount in since 2014. Um, and, and so I'm gonna kind of talk through the education, the technical assistance, some of the research and code initiatives, 
uh, that have been undertaken. And then what I would call maybe special projects or special initi initiatives to think through the kinds of investments that the Forest Service uh, has made. Um, one example of a kind of a special initiative is, is um, uh, the work that the Greg and, and his hackathon team uh, have done, which is, you know, our March timber madness that we're, that we're, that we're doing right now. Where we started, and we is, be, is really the collective we, but in 2014, you know, there was very few buildings uh, that were built with, uh, with what we would call mass timber here in the United States and, and no manufacturing facilities outside of Glulam. Um, you know, this strategic work has now accelerated to the point where we have 10 manufacturing plants uh, that are operational. We have additional in planning and, and, and moving forward. And we have um, seen, you know, a, a thousand buildings built in design or under construction. So there's really been uh, a lot of work, but just like any building, it's foundation. And this is that foundational work that, that was done uh, to bring attention to it, a White House summit, um, you know, tall building competition, which was uh, in partnership with the Softwood Lumber Board, uh, scaled up and increased investments with Woodworks to provide project assistance and education. And then having some of these grant programs uh, forward to be able to uh, support strategic catalytic investments to really help us improve the condition of our forests and support rural economies. So in education, you know, there's there's been a, a lot of things I think that have been you know catalytic uh, type investments, none better than Woodworks. And Woodworks has been hugely influential, and and their ability to provide education, you know, and up until last about this time last year, a year ago, you know, a lot of that was in person, and they made a really a seamless transition to a virtual um, uh, ability to provide education. And, and really help convert projects. And that's what they're really all about is education and project assistance. So we've been really proud of that investment, but, but really the work that's been done, and, and that's and a good example of a shared partnership with, uh, with the Softwood Lumber Board. You know, I mentioned buildings um, that are either, you know, construction started, they're in design, or they've been built. And that's, you know, numbers over a thousand uh, as of kind of the end of December. So I think, you know, you can see for the most part, um, there's very few states that haven't been touched or affected, um, you know, some opportunities more than others, but there's certainly uh, an increasing emphasis, uh, you know, that eastern seaboard is, is huge, kind of down through the heartland. Uh, Denver is certainly taking a huge uh, leadership opportunity in kind of the inner mountain regions. And then as you look up, uh, you know, through the, the west coast, you know, great business great opportunities. And um, I'm really excited to see that kind of growth. But it's just a start. You know, we have, you know, probably 15,000 plus 17,000 buildings that could be built using mass timber annually. And so I think we plan to continue to support and invest in catalytic things that will allow us to really capture that promise that is out there, uh, that it's out there for us. We uh, sponsored and supported financially the first International Mass Timber Conference. Um, really proud that that first one, you know, we were hoping for a couple hundred people. I think we're at, at you know, 350. Um, so we've just really been proud to see that happen. You know, very disappointed that, that last year um, we weren't able to meet in person, but this year, you know, the event will be virtual and, uh, you know, it's coming up here at the, uh, at the end of March and, and first part of April. You know, just an outstanding um, opportunity to network, to bring people together, to educate. Uh, we've also supported the, the development of their North American Mass Timber uh, report, and there'll be uh, a new report again uh, this year uh, that I think is going to be more uh, global in nature. So again, these are the kinds of things that we've been invested in. Uh, I've been really proud to be part of their steering committee over the last five years for this event. But there's also some other really wonderful projects that we've tried to ca uh, capture and document for education purposes. Uh, many of you are familiar with Carbon 12, which I think is still the tallest uh, building here in, uh, in the US. And I had an opportunity to live in kind of Northeast Portland at the end of last year. So I get to walk by Carbon 12 and in canyons almost, almost every day. And you know, so again, this, this you know, unique opportunity um, but what Kaiser Path did was, was work with the Forest Service to create, you know, the Building Carbon 12 website that really kind of walks people through wood and 
cross laminated timber, how they went through the design, the construction, and kind of future uh, future steps. So it really is an outstanding website, uh, Building Carbon 12. And I think that um, oh, there's a lot that we can learn and it really did document a very special uh, project. Uh, you know, we've, we get involved in some technical assistance and, and that, that comes in really a couple of different fashions. This one happens to be the, the project um, at Clemson uh, University. Um, kind of spearheaded by the Clemson uh, Wood Utilization and Design Institute, which we, we funded as a statewide wood innovations team or a statewide wood markets team. So there's been a variety of investments that we've tried to do from technical assistance. We've partnered, we've listened, we've toured um, all of these manufacturing facilities, you know, those that are, uh, that are operational, uh, those that are in construction and, and listen, you know, thinking about what is it that they need? What is it that they will support? Um, you know, what support do they need to, to start to continue to move forward? And, you know, we continue to have that conversation, especially with how is it we can continue to support the connection to forest management and the sustainable sourcing of wood that the Forest Service uh, really does do. You know, certainly manufacturing facilities in Canada and those uh, in Europe as well. And we're seeing product um, used uh, to build buildings, uh, wonderful buildings across the country. But we've really been, um, you know, excited to partner and listen to our, our uh, U.S. manufacturing uh, base. You know, interpreting, kind of thinking through um, PRG 320 in the United States and, and some folks from the Forest Products Laboratory have been invested in this and, and others and, and really kind of help kind of translating this, um, you know, this national standard as states and other organizations start to think through, you know, how do we get involved? How do we get engaged? And do our species count? You know, those kinds of things as we, as we really think through some of the next steps in our, uh, in our initiative. Here's an example, you know, I, I showed the, the picture on the front during construction, but this is the inside of the, uh, of the, the facility that was built at, at Clemson. You know, it's a recreation uh, facility that, that doubles as an education facility up on the second floor. So again, the opportunity in this case, Southern Yellow Pine, uh, CLT and, and Glue Lamb, you know, just an outstanding uh, example, again, of the kinds of strategic investments. Research and code, you know, that, that, that's a huge uh, effort. And we've seen, I think, a lot of um, success, you know, and, and we'll, we'll kind of walk through, you know, that. But ultimately, it's, it's allowed us um, you know, it's allowed the country and in the U.S. to to adopt, and in some cases embrace the international uh, 2021 International Building Code for the U.S. Um, some states and some municipalities have actually accelerated that, and that has been really important. And here is the um, the project in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Ascent Project, um, which has uh, you know is is going to be you know a sub substantially, if if not the tallest timber building. Uh, in the world, uh, one of the tallest, and certainly that, that in the United States. The, my colleagues, uh, engineers, scientists, support staff, the Forest Products Laboratory are really working in, a, in kind of a couple of areas of, of research, and, and all of this is done in partnership. And I, 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 you know, uh, I didn't want to leave any partners off, but there are so many uh, partners that are scientists and engineers, and some of this work is being done at the Forest Products Laboratory. And a lot of it's being done in partnership at, with universities or other organizations uh, around the country. Um, our fire uh, and building sciences group has been really instrumental in, in some of the um, larger um, you know, fire testing. Uh, this was some, some work done at the uh, alcohol ATF uh, in, on the East Coast and, and really thinking through these buildings and, and how do they perform and, and informing all of this, you know, you think of it, it's, it, it's miti minimizing risk, mitigating risk, but it's also providing the education and information that was key in that adoption of new building codes and incorporating additional classes and heights of, of timber buildings. Um, those in the seismic area are really doing some terrific work. Um, Doug Raymer and Marco Lorico and, and others, um, Sam Zelinka and, and Laura Hasbauer and, and some of their team are, are involved in the fire uh, slide that I showed uh, previously. Durability, you know, I think when we think about wood, um, we, we really need to think about and understand those things that affect it, whether it be weather, decay, termites, um, you know, and other things. And, and um, you know, Grant Kirker and others within the Forest Service have really engaged with folks like Woodworks to, um, to translate that research information into practical 
on the ground implementation uh, guide guidance. Um, understanding, you know, moisture and moisture management. You know, many of these, a number of buildings have been uh, constructed. I think Sam Zalinka is going to make a presentation talking about kind of this moisture monitoring that has taken place in constructed buildings as part of the International uh, Mass Timber Conference uh, here in a couple of weeks. And then really, you know, the last part is, is there is this kind of understanding of life cycle analysis um, and, and how do timber buildings engage? And, and so Rick Bergman is a project leader for that group. And he and other members of their team and many partners have really been trying to understand, you know, this, this connection. And it's a, in some ways it's comparative to other building materials, uh, but, but our ability to understand the embodied carbon uh, that's part of uh, building these buildings, the connection to carbon storage, we know wood stores 50% carbon and, and, and trees absorb CO2 out of the atmosphere. And, and how do we do that? So LCA, environmental product declaration, kind of carbon, um, understanding and, and how that, uh, those implications go forward. You know, some, some incredible work again there. And all of that really has led to, uh, you know, to the uh, ICC 2021 uh, adoption that, that creates additional um, opportunities. And like I said, some states and municipalities um, have already accelerated that and are, are using that guidance as we go forward. And others are creating additional information for future um, you know, for future code revisions as we as we move forward. And then I'd, I'd like to you know, kind of wrap up here and, and then, you know, leave some some time at the end for for conversation. Um, you know, a lot of special initiatives and, and these have have really tried to be, you know, catalytic investments with with high performing partners to allow us to to leverage, you know, a lot of this is understanding and visibility. And when people get into a mass timber building, they get it. When but honestly, when people take a walk in a, in a managed forest, they get it. And, and, uh, and when they can talk through you know, both of those things, all of a sudden we have this increased enhanced understanding. When you're in a timber, mass timber building and you can talk about it and you can understand the things that went into design, fabrication, construction, and then life in service, you know, we've, got, we've just got a huge opportunity there. So the University of Arkansas has, has um, really catalyzed a lot of investments at their, at their university uh, to think through um, how this works and resulting in um, a number of facilities, including this residence hall um, constructed in, in 2019. The Forest Service has, has, a, um, has two grants programs. Um, I'm just highlighting here kind of the Wood Innovations uh, Grant. So this was our first grant program that was really initiated in 2014. And you can see that, that the number of mass timber grants is, has gone up. We, maybe we plateaued a little bit last year, um, but, but it's really been, I, I think, a, a continued and, and, uh, and it will continue to be uh, an emphasis area for us. So you can see that about out of the ones that have been funded, all right, so these are just funded grants, about 50% for the last three years have been uh, you know, funded around mass timber to support applied work, to support market development, demonstration, engineering and design, and applied research. Um, so about half of the, you know, so annually we fund totally, you know, usually around $8 million a year or so. Um, and about half of that has been, a little over half has been to mass timber. And we, uh, we are in the process uh, currently of reviewing this year's um, applications. And again, you know, we, I think it, it will be, it's fair to say that, um, uh, there's been a uh, continued emphasis by applicants on mass timber and supporting these markets, and, and we're really excited to see that. There's a, a second uh, program that we also are offering um, this year uh, for the first time, and it's, it's known as the Community Wood Grant Program, and it, it creates our ability to do two things. One is to support wood energy um, uh, implementation of wood energy, you know, uh, facilities. So in that case, um, it, it's it's uh, thermally led uh, heat and and uh, and and cogeneration of electricity. Uh, but it also there's a second opportunity there for for um, equipment support and capital support for innovative wood products manufacturing. And and um, you know we don't have a we have only a, a two million dollar budget this year. So we're not going to be able to fund nearly as many good projects as we have, but having those good projects allows us to, uh, um, you know, continue to report that we have more good projects and we're able to uh, to fund. 
And, uh, and I think that's key in, as we continue to, to try to grow and expand both of these programs. Um, Department of Defense, um, you know, there's been a, a, an active uh, initiative. Um, there was blast uh, testing that, that took place in, in, the, in the Southeast to really understand kind of first of its kind, how does, how does these mass timber products perform under, under blast type conditions? And what that allowed and, and created was a half dozen or so um, um, on base privatized hotels um, that are that were constructed. This is the, 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 the building at uh, Washington State, State Joint uh, Base Lewis McCord. And uh, we were able to tour that with, uh, with Len Lease, uh, which was a contractor uh, for, that, uh, for that initiative and for that, 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 that building. Um, you know, again, this opportunity to, to really think about and demonstrate um, the incredible performance of this. And, and this blast testing got a lot of other people's attention. And if, it's, if, it's, if, if this product can perform and be this resilient, we think it has all sorts of other applications um, in for corporate headquarters and, and other scenarios uh, across the country. Um, Southwood Lumber Board, Think Wood, um, have, have partnered with a couple other organizations to take some of this education on the road. And we were, um, they were delayed uh, with COVID last year, but it's a, it's a mobile um, tour that can go to conferences and events. Um, it can go to universities to really talk about both the sustainable nature of wood, but also the engineering uh, practices and, and design considerations and the whole host, the whole family of, of engineer building materials. So really an outstanding um, um, uh, initiative. Um, I, I can't wait to see it, uh, it rolling again, uh, you know, um, rolling again down the road uh, for part of education and demonstration. This year, um, we, we invested in, in um, uh, an organization known as the Impact Finance Center. And what they are really doing is, is thinking about what is known as impact investing. And you can kind of think about impact investing in a couple ways. One is, is if you are the, um, instead of just giving a grant, you may be as an organization giving a grant that is partially returned you know, for, for future use. Or if you're a recipient, it could be partially forgivable loan. You know, a, it, it's a grant to you that's, that's partially forgivable. And, and so I think there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. But the key to this is, is really to identify, educate, and activate investors. And uh, Stephanie uh, Gripney and, and her team have, have really done a good job. They brought their, uh, they've had three, two events uh, so far. A third one I think is, is coming up, or maybe we've already had three. Uh, but to really bring together the, the investment community, the, um, the, the, the innovative um, you know, businesses that are looking for investment and to help them uh, connect and, and engage. And I think we're, we've been really excited about the results and, and effectiveness that they've had so far. Um, but they've also done a couple other things. They brought together all of our Wood Innovation grant recipients in a, in a monthly networking to really create again this 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 broad-based network of, of connections. So we're really um, excited about the work uh, that Impact Finance Center has done, and we'll uh, continue to support them uh, into uh, into the next year. Universities, you know, universities have jumped in in, in a couple of different ways. Uh, the Forest Service offered a university grant competition where we were able to provide $100,000 to 10 universities for them to kind of move forward with their um, investments and, and to try to bring projects to market. Um, you know, one that's, that is nearing, and I just looked at the construction video again last night, University of Idaho's uh, new basketball arena. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's under construction. It seems to be closed in uh, based on the, the, the latest uh, video cameras that, that I've seen. Um, so again, you know, those kinds of things have taken place. Um, the Tallwood Design Institute at, uh, between the University of Oregon, Oregon State University, um, and their George Emerson uh, facility, you know, that's a mass timber facility. Um, but then there was other projects where, where universities have really been, you know, key, key, uh, key investments, uh, programmatic decisions, you know, things at the University of Arkansas, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, um, Michigan State University. I mean, there, again, there's, there's really this opportunity to do a couple things, you know, educate the next generation of engineers, architects, construction managers, 
resource managers, all of that, it creates a public space where people can get in and tour. Um, you know, and, and it, I think and those, are, those are really important parts of continuing to create understanding awareness of, of this emerging uh, class of, of buildings in, in the country. And then, you know, a very successful uh, demonstration was at the National Building Museum in Washington, D.C. And, you know, 80,000 people, I think, plus a lot of elected officials, um, you know, were able to tour, educate, understand, and think about uh, mass timber as it was um, it was emerging. Uh, yeah, I got a chance to go through there a couple of times, and every time I went through there, I, I learned something new and, and different. On the communication uh, point, and, and uh, I just want to wrap up on, on a couple things. You know, I, again, part of this is social license, and part of it is just education. You know, we've supported um, America's Forest with Chuck Lavelle. You know, the very first episode was in it was in Oregon with uh, with Dr. Johnson and CLT Manufacturing. Um, last year, they finished an episode in the state of Wisconsin featuring the Forest Products Laboratory. They're going to be going to Arkansas next. So I think, again, there's these, these huge opportunities for us to, to uh, communicate in an informational and educational uh, way. And then Forest Proud, um, North American Forest Partnership, for, known as Forest Proud, has just done a series of really good um, videos that have educated and informed um, in some cases, they've featured, um, you know, wonderful architects like Susan Jones, um, you know, really, you know, stepping forward and thinking through how this connects with, with our, uh, you know, with, with so many people in, in, in our next generations and, 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 and through our elected officials. So education and communication are some other catalytic investments that we've brought forward. So I'm going to wrap up kind of bringing it back to where I started. You know, um, the Forest Service manages 193 million acres of which we can harvest on about half of that. And our goal is really to sustain, um, you know, to, to reduce hazardous fuels, to think about long-term, sustainable, resilient forests. And, and, and those are our goals. And we have a, a regulatory framework that we focus on, but it's not all about timber. It's about improving the condition of our land, of which timber is one of those byproducts that comes out. But it may be improved uh, recreation. It may be improved uh, fire resilience, um, local jobs. And I think that the Colville National Forest in, in eastern uh, Washington has really been at the forefront of this collaborative approach to kind of think through and communicate the forestry that we're doing. Um, on this project that is, uh, that's, that's underway, you know, there are a variety of, of, of treatments that are used to accomplish these kinds of things. And, and part of that is returning fire uh, on the ground through prescribed fire. It's a collaborative process with federal, state, private, NGOs, tribal partners. Um, and, and, and it's a well-monitored um, approach. So I do think there's, there's this improved opportunity to think about the, the, the wood that comes from a forest service uh, sale and our connection and, and that is really important to us. And that's what really brought me to the Forest Service was this connection back to our lands and to create these healthy, resilient uh, landscapes that are, that are really across boundaries, state, federal, tribal, tribal and, and other partners. So that brings us to the end, uh, opportunity for, for taking some questions that, that um, uh, maybe have, have come, at, come in. You know, this is, this is you know, it's been a great opportunity and I, I really appreciate uh, Greg Howes and, and so many of, of his partners who have, who have really brought this uh, event forward. You know, what a, what a great month. Um, you know, the, the daily presentations that, that Greg has scheduled, the end of the month, the International Mass Timber Conference, you know, great opportunities and, and hopefully at this time next year, we're, uh, we're all in person. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. I, I mean, thank you for covering so much territory. I get, my first question is, how does one possibly begin to keep up? There's so many people working in so many areas to make progress, make it make it make us possible to do this, to build this way with all the necessary requirements. What do you? And now, yeah, you as the new assistant director, what what advice do you have to those people who do want to try and keep up with developments? Yeah, there's you know a, a lot of his relationships and and really identifying. Uh, and those connections, you know, within the Forest Service, we have we have our, our regional uh, staff that that's that's pretty heavily involved in, in a lot of the regional activities. They manage our grant programs in the regions, and they're kind of that first point of contact. Um, but then, when you think bigger, right? You think about the networking 
that takes place amongst all of you in, in things like um, conferences, in, in organizations and events that, that are done by, by folks like, uh, by, like Woodworks. You know, I think um, we're seeing creative um, uh, events that are taking place and, and really building those relationships. So it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a myriad of opportunity out there and a, and a myriad of partners. And, and I think getting to know, um, you know, folks and, and really building those relationships has helped us and hopefully it will uh, help many of the folks uh, here. And I think we're, you know, we, we continue to look for opportunities to understand uh, things that are taking place um, outside the U.S. and how they may impact the U.S. and, and as we go forward. So a lot of a uh, lot of points there and, and we're, you know, we're a small team and, and, and sometimes we just don't have enough capacity, but we're going to do absolutely the best we can. And um, thank you. And we have a question from Erica Spiritos. Um, she asks, hi, Brian. My understanding is that the NFMA requires the U.S. Forest Service to develop plans for national forest. Can you talk more about the specific forestry practices employed in national forest to promote long-term forest health? Are those practices region-specific? How were they set? Thank you. Okay, well, thanks for the question, uh, Erica. Um, I'm not sure NFMA um, uh, exactly what that acronym is, but, but I think I can address some of the other parts of it. So the Forest Service um, follows a regulatory framework when it comes to our forest management. Uh, activities and 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 that work is uh, is a is a public and, and transparent uh, approach. Um, I shared a little bit in a webinar that we did for uh, for Woodworks back in October, kind of starting to think through how those things uh, uh, take place. So you know one of the best opportunities to connect and understand is at the regional level, and you know we we have very you know very diverse parts of the United States, the U.S. Southeast. The Forest Service has, you know, a very small percentage. The Upper Midwest, you know, where like six percent of the forest land is is federal, and there's so much more that's 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 private or or um, small family uh, landowners. Um, so those are kinds of uh, global differences that that do take place. But the Forest Service is, um, you know, um, starting to articulate. I think do a better job of articulating the practices that we do have. Um, it is a transparent process, and each national forest. Um, has an environmental review process that they follow through, uh, known as NEPA, National Environmental uh, Practice, Policy Act, Practices Act. And um, so there are public websites, but those are the things I think that we're going to continue to try to, uh, to engage and, and, and kind of help people do a better job of understanding the, the goals and the objectives of individual projects. And, and as I articulated just on the Colville as an example, I just showed those last two slides, you know, those kinds of activities are, um, uh, you know, are present on timber sales, um, you know, across the country. Thank you. And just a little follow-up question from Erica. Uh, what do you perceive to be the biggest challenges or hurdles to achieving your stated mission? I, 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 didn't, I didn't know the U.S. Forest Service only has one mission, but in it's general, a, I guess. It's a big mission, isn't it, to, um, you know, to, 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 to manage the health productivity of our, of our nation's forests. Um, you know, we, we, we are faced with, with a couple things, you know, and, and, and um, fire is, is one of them. And I think it's become, you know, where when, you know, years ago it was, um, you know, fire seasons and now we seem to have a, a fire years. Uh, we do have insect and disease issues. So, you know, managing those kinds of activities are, are really important uh, for us with, with ourselves and with state partners. So I think, you know, the, the mission is, is, um, is broad, um, but, but it is, you know, a, a cohesive uh, effort across the, uh, across the agency. Um, you know, I think the, the chief can probably articulate it better, but it is, um, you know, an, an approach that we're gonna do and, and continue to work. You know, my, my world for the most part is market development. And uh, so I, I try to stay in my lane, but I try to engage with colleagues on, uh, on the national forest side to, uh, to help um, you know, make those connections and to uh, you know, create additional opportunities as we move forward. Uh, thank you. And here's a question from Frank Weeks. Can you speak of successful partnerships with Native American groups and organizations and any management strategies that have been gleaned from their insights? Sure. Yeah, the um, you know, and I'm you know, Forest Service um, is uh, is is quite engaged with um, with the tribal uh, nations uh, here in the United States. 
Um, I'm going to speak a little bit to, to my engagement. Um, I, I live here in the upper Midwest and we've uh, the Forest Products Laboratory and um, and in my, my unit has been involved with the Menominee uh, Nation, Menominee Tribal Enterprises in central uh, Wisconsin. They're actually featured in the America's Forest with Chuck Lavelle, Wisconsin episode, and really kind of understanding their um, long-term perspective, but their active management perspective um, that they have, uh, that, they've, that they've done there. But more broadly, we are engaged with the Intertribal Timber Council. So the Intertribal Timber Council represents those tribes that are engaged in uh, forestry and forest products activities. You know, there are um, a, lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of tribes that own timberland and that have active uh, forest management and forest products um, uh, businesses. So we are engaged and it, it's been a, a real priority area uh, for me uh, to, to try to engage and work with, uh, with tribal uh, nations where we can. Yeah, thank you. I think that's where about all the questions you've covered so much territory. Oh, here's well, here's another one coming in. But while I'm reading that, I do want to remind people you mentioned uh, Susan Jones, the innovative work she's done. She's an upcoming speaker. Uh, Stephanie Gripney uh, with uh, will be speaking on Impact Finance Center. Uh, Lendlease, you mentioned their work. Daryl Patterson will be speaking on the 27th. And I mentioned also Kevin Naranjo who is giving more information on the uh, Forest Service Grant Program. Uh, that's coming yeah, up as well. And, and Kevin is, Kevin's a huge part of, of, of our team. Um, you know, Kevin has, has been, you know, really managing a lot of these special initiatives that we, uh, that we talked about. And, and he's our National Wood Innovation Grants uh, Manager. And Kevin has is, is just uh, really been uh, terrific. Uh, he's he's um, been in that position now in, 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 in one way or another for about the last year. And uh, you know, just outstanding and, and building relationships uh, across the country uh, as we as we continue to move these uh, these forward. We have another question from Marcus. I believe it's Kaufman. It's he asked. It's clear mass timber is a high priority for FPL and wood innovations and state and private. Can you talk about how the interest in mass timber hits the ground in the national forest system? You know, there's um, there's a couple things. One, we're starting to use um, mass timber in our own construction, and um, there's been a, a number of projects that have been uh, built or in design right now uh, to incorporate that at the national forest system level when it comes to um, actual construction. Um, you know, we did um, lose buildings uh, like like so many. Um, unfortunate. You know, we had uh, some buildings uh, consumed by fire last year as well. And we are exploring and, and will continue to explore how mass timber uh, can be part of, of, of those replacements. Um, and then on the other end of it, as we've, you know, we've continued to engage and, and have some of these conversations, I've, I've kind of touched on it a little bit today to, to help bring the connection between, you know, our force management practices um, forward so that, that, that I think there's improved and, and, and better understanding of, you know, the goals and objectives of, of how we do manage and how we do complete our mission. Uh, to uh, to take care of the nation's forests. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're closing up on an hour. Um, I'll try to get this uh, video posted to YouTube, hopefully uh, later today. And then as I mentioned to people, we wanna get maximum publicity, just having those available on YouTube, but then try to have uh, moderated discussions so we can continue the engagement with people like you online. And I'm working on that in the Mass Timber City group. Uh, just to keep keep these conversations flowing. But thank you for your time. Thank you, audience. And uh, thank you, Brian. You're welcome. I um, hope everybody can log into lots more of these. Great job, Greg. Congratulations. Thank you.